Okay, I'm back. All right, sorry for that disruption, but you can see it's working. Turns out you can't have two USB webcams plugged into the same hub and have them work at the same time. Whatever. You know, sometimes uh, you just kind of go with the flow. You just kind of go with it. So there, there wasn't really many people watching. All right, but look, I got the head tracking working. Check it out. So I got a USB webcam up there running um, these two applications. This is AI track, which this is reading my face and turning these dots into tracking data. And then that's fed to open track. Pretty lame, you have to run two separate applications, but here we are. And now this is, you can see getting the data and doing all the configuration into uh, pushing it all into Microsoft Flight Simulator. And then I have configured here a button I can disable it and re-enable it. Okay, all right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I yeah, I get frustrated when things aren't working, and I don't like to. Um, uh, I don't like to. Uh, yeah, it would just had me all. You know, would have just had me all in a weird mood to try to do this whole flight. So. Okay, start the engine up and ballast. I'm gonna fly this flight with no ballast. Pretty sure we wanna be light as, light as possible when we get up to uh, higher altitudes. Maybe I'm totally wrong in that thinking, but nobody's watching right now, so one person's watching. <laughs> uh, it's all good. Okay, engine on. We'll get it warmed up here. And I'm also going to, I'm just going to slew. I'm gonna back up, because we need as much runway as we can get here. It's a minute to uh, get going here. I'm gonna try and fly over Mount Everest. So yeah, if you guys join in late, or this, <laughs> joining on the second try, here's the task. 366.9 miles. Take off and first hit this first one. We're actually going to try to hit all eight of the 8,000 meter plus peaks here in the Himalayas. Which, um, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be tricky. It's going to be tough. The stall speed goes up when we get up to higher altitudes, and uh, yeah. So, just waiting for the engine to warm up here. Get going. Got the DG808. My little ACDC guy here. And, uh, ah, all right, okay, all right, let's, uh, I can turn head tracking on, I can look around. I think I'll take, turn it off for takeoff. Spoilers, spoilers all the way up because they act like parking brakes and throttle all the way up. We'll let the engine spool up and release the spoilers. And we'll start to roll. Get this flight underway. And go one down, down one notch of flaps. And I'm also going to aim for this gap in the trees here. Well, maybe I don't need to. Oh yeah, we can the airspeed here. We'll be good. Come off the ground, gear up. Flaps up and head tracking on. All right, where's the cloud? Where are we gonna go for the cloud? And actually, I, I don't remember call. Double checking on the weather here. July 1st, yep, we got the right preset. And altitude is 8,400 feet, and we got a big, giant, fat cloud right here. Let's go check out this cloud. One of the main uh, reasons for the head tracking is I think it makes for a better viewing experience. You get sort of a natural, you know, head movement, kind of flowy, right? Rather than uh, rather than this. Or it's just locked. So I think this actually does make for a better viewing experience based on watching other people's streams.
And it sounds like I'm doing pretty good up in the thermal already. So I'm going to kill the engine and just try to work this lift here at 9,000 feet. Oh, maybe not. I thought it was in the thermal there, but I guess that was maybe just uh, just the motor doing that. Yeah, all right, let me get some power here. Let's get a little bit closer to the cloud. some absolutely gargantuan mountains to get up and over today so we're gonna need all the lift we can get all the altitude we can muster took off at 8,000 so climb to about 9,000 here or sorry climb to about 10,000 so there we go. All right, now let's cut the motor, cut the throttle, and we'll see. A couple of notches of flaps. Head tracking is much better for uh, checking terrain clearance as you turn towards a hill. And I got a quick button to disable it. I kind of think in general for thermaling it might be distracting. Not hugely strong lift here, but it is lift. All right, let's go ahead and kill the motor. As we get higher here, we'll uh, get linked, synced up with the with the better lift. Looks like it's a little farther north of me. I tried head tracking in the past a couple of different times. I tried the uh, I tried this open source application, but um, it seemed at the time to cause a pretty big performance hit. Sim did not run smooth with it, or I just didn't spend the time to tweak the settings to get it to work to get it to work right. Then more recently, I tried the uh, Toby Eye Tracker, which is uh, a very popular device, uh, pretty high end. Um, works really well, but I didn't like it because, you know, it would track my eyes as I look off the screen. So when I look down to read the chat, there I am reading the chat, which is what's constantly panning down. So it kind of think like, well, it doesn't really work for streaming, so I just, I just returned it because I'm like, it doesn't work for me. Not liking it. But then I realized the way people are using it for streaming is they disable the eye tracking and they just have it doing head tracking. Now it makes sense. So now I can look down at the screen without it really, without it tracking down. It only tracks down if you do if you look down or, or lean in, right? So 
so I can do that with the webcam too. So I'll try this with the webcam and then, I don't know, if I like it, maybe I'll switch back to the Toby. Maybe I'll try that again someday, but I've got like a $30 webcam on here. So instead of a $300 device, so. And there's that strong lift we've been looking for, a 12 knots. There we go. And just passing 11,000 feet there. All right, let's turn head tracking back on and kind of look around. And look up at the clouds. Look back down. It's another crappy rainy day in SoCal. Another great day for flight simming. So I'm cool with that. Also excited I ordered a new uh, a flight stick. So I'm going to swap the yoke out for a stick pretty soon. And I'm excited. I'll tell you guys about that a little later on. When we're doing long glides here. Because there's going to be uh, plenty of those. I'm trying to slow down here in this lift. 11,500. So yeah, we're gonna need a lot of climbing today. And we're need, gonna need a lot of altitude because well, we got to be up over 28,000 feet. So if we can successfully fly this task, it'll make a new, uh, it'll mean a new altitude record uh, for me in the sim. I think I've been to like 24,000 in one of those monster thermals. Got some nice looking clouds today. Just getting to uh, 12,000 feet there. We'll get the music back going in a bit, but first limo of the day, we just need to listen to the Vario. This will be our music machine for now. Not the strongest of lifts I've ever had, but it's big and pretty consistent. So we're going up, there's 12,400 feet. And we're not really racing today. Do want to fly fast and efficiently so it doesn't take all day. I don't really need another marathon stream, but you know, we'll do what we, we'll do what we, we'll do what we gotta do. These mountains already look absolutely gargantuan. We're just in the just in the foothills really of the Himalayas. Almost thirteen thousand feet, and it does not feel like I'm very high. Yeah, I mean look at how much taller. <laughs> it's big up here. Yesterday we had a fun flight in the Alps. Did uh, something quite a bit different with trying to land and take off on the side of the mountain and eh, it didn't work very well. <laughs> There's 13,000.
flying a bit too slow here. I've been trying to fly a little slower in the thermals with this airplane, and I think I, now I'm flying too slow. There it is. That's it. There's 11 knots of lift. That's what we want to see. Really slow there. Beeping and beeping going up. We need a lot of altitude today. There's going to be a lot of beeping there, hopefully. There's 14,000 feet. slow here trying to find that sweet spot beeping and beeping 14,500 feet a lot of climbing to do today This is a flight I've wanted to attempt for a while now. I may have flown up here just one time in the sim. Yeah, I think a long time ago, just kind of goofing around in one of the powered air, one of the turboprop airplanes or a jet or something, and, you know, just to fly by and check out the scenery. But uh, have not tried to uh, soar there. I've not tried to fly there up to Mount Everest in a glider yet. I don't even really know if it's gonna, you know, really be possible. Should be. Well, maybe I need less flaps here. Maybe that's my problem. So I'm not flying with any ballast. I took the ballast out. Ah, yeah, there we go. The DG-808 here seems like a, um, I mean, obviously a great airplane. Uh, it seems like it's trickier to fly than the Discus. I've been flying the Discus 2C for quite a while, switched to the DG-808, and the DG-808 being a flapped glider gives you more more control and more more ability to fly faster or slower but you have to be uh, sort of as a negative consequence of that it means you have to be actively working the flaps you can't uh, uh, to get the most out of it so I definitely prefer the simplicity of the discus
I mean, I'm definitely getting up here. 15,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and dump my fuel. There we go. No more fuel. It's all, all thermal power this flight. No motors allowed. I hope you guys like the sound of beeps because we're going to hear a lot of it today. Up the cloud base now. This cloud base is obviously well below where any of these uh, tall peaks are, but the clouds will rise as we get into the higher terrain. Coming around now, 16,000 feet. Climb right up through the bottom of this cloud. Getting into the gray room here. We're gonna have to climb up through the dark uh, part of the cloud. We should kind of fly out of the front of it. And there's that 11 knots of lift. Sixteen thousand six hundred feet. fly upwind of the cloud here that's where we tend to fly find the strongest lift in the sim which is okay because I kind of need to get out of the cloud anyways get some airspeed up here as I turn back 17,000 feet there's the airfield they took off from and we're drifting north which is mostly the direction we need to go so that's good that's south winds today. Yes, thank you, NVIDIA GeForce Experience. It's kind of simultaneously a great application and an obnoxious one. Go in and out of this cloud here. We don't have a uh, cloud rule in effect today. We I just flying. Just worried about completing the task at all costs. I 
I'm doing great. Powered up here, took off, had a nice smooth takeoff. And now climbing up through this cloud. We do have a task. So it's not just uh Not just a free flight, we do have a task for navigation. I hope I didn't, uh, the technical issues, I hope I didn't scare everybody off. Probably by going live and then closing it out and then going back live again maybe uh, cause some issues but that's all right we're gonna fly anyways 18,200 feet as we go up and in and out and around this cloud here just gonna focus on climbing still so I need about 10,000 more feet to be able to be above Mount Everest not going quite that high initially, but we will need to get that high eventually. Thank you for joining me today. It's uh, another crappy rainy day in SoCal. Weather has been terrible here. Of course, we need the rain. And going in and out of the cloud here, my airspeed, I'm like diving and climbing like this. Incredibly dangerous. I should probably try to get out of this cloud. And we got some pretty big clouds here today, too. So, yeah, let's. have an artificial horizon <laughs> just looking at my airspeed go up and down up and down okay let's try not to go into the middle of the dark cloud like this because these are big clouds and they're gonna lose my way pretty easily I'm gonna try to climb up on the outside of them which fortunately still seems like we usually get pretty good lift. Ah, now it's like a bright and sunny day. I haven't head tracked in a while, so. Yep, lots of lift out here. I'm at 19,000 feet. big stutters. That was rather obnoxious. Yeah, we oftentimes find good lift kind of in these sort of gaps between the clouds. on the uh, top edge of this one so I'll just kind of dip into here Dryson what's up brother how you doing how's the gliding going it's going pretty well it's going better than the uh, uh, better than the technical difficulties I had getting set up earlier but uh, I got those resolved 
fortunately, a quick Google search revealed the source of those issues. We're down here in the Himalayas going for some uh, epic high altitude stuff. I'm actually going to change turn direction so I can stay out of that cloud. And I got the, uh, got the head tracking set up. Trying to get mentally ready for bed. I know what that's like. And uh, I oftentimes, well, at least on when I stream on the weekdays, I tend to stream like right up until bedtime or pretty close to it. And if it's a good stream and we're hanging out, then, um, yeah, then getting mentally ready for bed is is a thing. Like it, Like I got to had to calm down for a little while, right? So I can't quite just go to sleep right away after a after a good good stream, a good good flight. Uh, what head tracking did you get? Yeah, so this is the um, you know the open source uh, freeware that uses a webcam. There's these two applications, AI Track and Open Track. And after some fiddling, I think I've got it working pretty well. Um, whoa, it, it's a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit glitchy from time to time. But I think I got it doing what I want it. Yeah, need a minute to calm down. Okay, I'm at 19,000 feet. Let's go ahead and start the task. It's gonna need to be a lot higher, but the lifts will get higher as I get, as I get closer, as the uh, elevation rises, so... Yeah, I think uh, we'll go over to this big cloud here and see if we can climb up the front of that. Going to need a lot of altitude. Yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it working um, pretty good. And uh, one of the reasons for uh, getting it set up was I think it makes it better viewing on the stream. Uh, let me know, you know, if you agree since you're watching. But I think it's a lot more interesting to look at on the stream when you can see the camera kind of smoothly panning around like this, like a natural, you know, head tracking, right? Um, that versus just being locked and sort of... This makes the image just look like totally flat, right? And I can, I mean, I can pan around and stuff, right? But... Um, it's not the same thing, is it? So this is Dryson. This is just using a um, like the absolute cheapest Logitech webcam you can buy, um, and um, so I just ordered a better webcam, and so maybe with a better webcam it'll be even it'll be even better. So we'll see. Um, you like it, especially when it's yeah VFR, yeah. Well, that's all we do in the gliders is fly VFR. Except for when I go into the cloud here, which I'm technically not supposed to do, but, uh, <laughs> you know. We can break the rules in the sim. I'm using my webcam for stream cam. Yes, uh, so that was the source of the technical problem that I had. Um, uh, yeah, Virtual FAA is not watching. Yep, that is correct. Um, yeah, so the source of the problem I had was I, I set up the, the head tracking with the secondary webcam and got that all working. And then I loaded up OBS Studio to start the stream and then started the stream, and then all of a sudden it was not working. Um, what the heck is going on? It wasn't detecting the camera. And it turned out to be, um, uh, you know, so I had the two cameras were conflicting, like I could only have one running at a time, which kind of, which doesn't make sense. I mean, I know you can have, uh, you, you can only have one application using a webcam at the time. You can't use the same webcam for the streaming camera and the head tracking camera. That makes sense. Why can't I have, you know, one supposed to be going to one application, one the other? And um, 
fortunately, a quick Google search um, basically said, uh, well, you can't have um, two webcams plugged into the same USB bus. Which I did. I had them both plugged into this um, external USB, uh, um, you know, dock, USB extender. And so I plugged the plugged the head tracking webcam directly into a USB port on my motherboard, and everything is fine. So, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I learned something new today. <laughs> and of course, it's it breaks, you know, right when I'm starting to stream, and like, you know, I could have just said, "Forget it. I won't do the head tracking on this stream," but. Um, I can't do that. Like, I get, like, I, I get, like, I can't, I, I can't be content with things not working. Like, that just, it just goes right up my spine, you know? It's like, ah, it's like, mm. I cannot deal with that. And, uh, like, so there's no way I could do a f stream for, you know, three, four, five hours or something like that with the thing not working. I would just be totally, you know, thinking about this problem the whole time. So, I mean, I had to, like, stop the stream to troubleshoot and get it to work. <laughs> Plus, I just spent like a couple hours setting up and configuring it and getting it the way I like, and now I can't use it. I'm like, no, cannot do that. Cannot do that. Now look at this big monster of a cloud. So we're looking for some big lift here. I'm at 18,400 feet. And uh, yeah, <laughs> 25 miles ago, at minus 10,000 feet. Uh, so we need a lot of climbing today. So we're going to get up around this cloud here and hopefully we'll find, usually on the upwind side of the cloud, we find the thermal. It'll take us, take us right up here. You're going to need a lot of climbing today. A little bit of background music going. Yeah, yeah, that's why you're working late. Yep, yep, yeah. You get that problem in your brain? That's that engineer brain, right? You start thinking about a problem and you just can't, you just can't rest until you solve that problem, right? Although I think when it comes to work stuff, I'm usually good at, I'm usually good at putting it off. I can, I can usually take a chill pill. All right, where's this thermal here? The whole weekend would have been ruined. Right. Yeah, I tend to, um... I tend to, I don't, I don't tend to. I very much purposely prefer and try to keep work and personal life separate. And, um, you know, um, so work problems, you know, those stay at work, home problems stay at home. And um, I try to keep that, that work-life balance, you know, um, I really don't want to be doing work stuff when I'm not working. And I think that's something that everybody has most at most occupations. You should have a reasonable expectation that, um, you know, when you're not working, you're not working. And, So let's see here. Not finding the thermal out in front of this cloud. That is not boasting well because we need lots of altitude here today. I don't really want to just go deep into the cloud here.
And it was fun talking about Taco Bell on your stream earlier. <laughs> Man. Well, do I just gotta go find another cloud? Why does it say task not started? Oh, I didn't have it on the, uh, whoopsie daisy. Wait, did it start? It did start. Oh, yeah, okay, task running, okay. <laughs> you really wanna try Taco Bell? Well, I mean, you know, it's cheap American fast food. It's junk food. And, I mean, one of the reasons I mentioned Taco Bell, uh, as far as, it would, it is, you know, like, to, like, you get a bunch of little burritos. And you can eat burritos really easily while you're flight simming, right? Everybody likes their junk food, their comfort food, right? And, uh... All right, I'm gonna head up to this cloud here. It's kind of along the along the flight path. You need to go. So yeah, you get a bunch of little burritos. You can eat burritos with one hand while you're flight simming, right? That's that's kind of why I mentioned, um, you know, convenient food that you can get. And DoorDash, the front door to my house is right here. So I mean, I could literally, you know, DoorDash Taco Bell, and then pick it up and eat it. You know, possibly the most convenient way to have food. Well, uh, well, flight simming, so. Okay, doing a little better as I get towards this cloud. <laughs> Eating while flying, yes, exactly. Lift the air as we get towards this cloud. We'll find it here. Twenty miles to this first big peak. We need a lot of climbing here. Let's find. So Dryson, you know a lot about flying the airliners and uh, VAT sim and everything. Uh, where did you learn all that stuff? Just like watching YouTube tutorials or watching other streamers or what's your uh, what's your process on that, your background on that? I, I think I'm pretty sure you're not a real life pilot, right? So. Certified desktop pilot. Yes. Aren't we all? I think that's the case for most streamers, at least. Or most of the streamers that I've been watching are not are not real life pilots. Yeah, we all talk about it like we know like what the fuck we're talking about. But <laughs> like, uh, no. I mean, I'm a real life hang glider pilot, but I've never flown a, never flown gliders. And there's a lot of instruments and things that I don't really know how to use properly. 70,500 feet and coming up under this cloud here, looking for the lift, finding the sink. Started in FS 2004. Yeah, so you've been at it for a while. Got it. So you've been studying flight quite a bit. In all of its virtual form. All right, coming up under this big cloud here. And some rugged terrain. Seventeen thousand four hundred feet. I only need to climb about 10,000 feet. It's the best spot of lift I've found so far under here. 
Reading manuals of planes. That is pretty nerdy. I appreciate that. Some nerds read, you know, Lord of the Rings. Song of Ice and Fire. Dryson, he reads Airbus A320. <laughs> Owner's manual. Operator's manual. J.R.R. Tolkien got nothing on the Airbus group. Probably just about as many words. All right. And probably just as difficult to understand. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got the climb here. Back to 18,000. And the clouds are rising with the train, as expected, so that is a good sign. I think one of the big challenging aspects of this flight is as we get higher in altitude, uh, so does climb our stall speed. So how is thermaling going to work up here at like 25,000 plus feet? Well, we're going to have to fly faster. So that means going to need stronger lift to uh, be able to climb. Well, let's see. I know people have gotten really high in thermals in the sim before in these types of weather conditions, so... Although I've yet to really find um, any of those big magical thermals yet. A320 manual is your evening read. Righty on. There we go. Kind of in and out of the lift. Not getting the uh, really, really excellent lift. I tweaked the weather uh, preset today from other things that we've had, and I don't know, maybe I'm regretting it. <laughs> we'll see. A little bit different today. Eighteen thousand nine hundred feet. Yeah, I'm not climbing well today. Thermals are tricky. up here. Keep that nose up. What are you using for uh, flight controls, Dyson? I've got the uh, Thrustmaster Boeing Edition yoke. Which may be kind of a sacrilege for an Airbus pilot to uh, fly with. However... 
find this to be and kind of and obviously not 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 one to one for the glider but I find this to be a really nice a very good quality device the um, the uh, tension the smoothness of the motion both the pitch and the roll axes are very very nice and that um, that is probably the most important aspect of yes yes so despite it being uh, you know not exactly that accurate for flying the glider is for flying in general um, very nice quality device However, I have been wanting to switch to a stick. That is 20,000 feet. A stick being, you know, much more one-to-one uh, -one for flying, well, any aircraft that uses a stick. Like, like all gliders do. Never seen a glider with a yoke. Um... I think a stick overall is just kind of more versatile than a yoke. I do kind of want to fly helicopters a little bit more, and the yoke with helicopters does not really work very well. I mean, you can do it, but it's... Holding the yoke forward is awkward. Twenty thousand five hundred feet. Try getting the flaps back down here. So I finally found a stick last night, and uh, that I think will work for me. And I ordered it. The, um, you know, I was kind of afraid this was going to happen. I, I tend to pretty much with every hobby, everything that I get into, I always tend to. Um, I always tend to like, you know, start to get into it, kind of ease my foot in the door, you know, buy, you know, one piece of hardware, or, you know, kind of like entry level mid ranges hardware or something. And then I get one other thing and then I get another thing and then it just snowballs into just like I'm just dumping all my cash uh, into the hobby. And that's the way it's become with the flight simming here at new graphics card, new CPU, new monitors. <laughs> You know, webcam, stick, mic, it, it's just, yeah, it's, it's financially not that great. Yes, you know how it is. Yes, yes. Um, so, yeah, the stick that I got, um, so it's kind of a story. Let me see if I can do this while thermaling. Uh, have you heard of verbal controls, uh, Dryson? Uh, Xmas sale for sceneries. All of a sudden, you had 14 new airports. Yeah, even with the sale, that probably got a little bit pricey. Um, verbal control. So I'll just I'll just kind of spoil it now. I did not order a verbal uh, uh, control, but as far as I know, these are. Hold on, wait. I can kind of. I can kind of bring this up. I need to just see my airspeed here. Well, I, I can I can listen to the beep and look at this. <laughs> So as far as I know, these are like the absolute like best high end in terms of enthusiast consumer flight simming. But uh, look at the prices here. This is two hundred and eighty dollars just for the stick, and then you need another three hundred dollar base. So you're looking at well over you know six hundred bucks uh, U.S. for. But look at it. it's got RGB lighting. Um. Yeah, these, as far as I, I've been doing a little bit of research lately, and, and these are, like, kind of regarded as, like, the creme de la creme, the best of the best when it comes to uh, uh, flight sim controls. So I was going to just kind of, you know, bite the bullet and order a verbal setup. 
Um, you know, but then I found uh, something else, and I actually need to. Uh... So fortunately, uh, the Chinese. Um... <laughs> Uh, the Chinese are good at uh, making, um, mm, mm, you know, they're good at making total knockoffs, but also semi-knockoffs. And we're just going to go ahead and climb up into this cloud, who cares? We need the altitude, 23,000 feet. Need to get up there some more. So, um, Win Wing, Chinese company Win Wing, they uh, seem to be also a basically a Chinese version of uh, high end enthusiasts. Yeah, and knockoffs probably not a great not a great term because these don't look like I mean these these are these look most I mean it's the same same type of uh, construction, and um, but uh, uh, but not it's not accurate or fair to say that they are knockoffs. Ooh, look at my airspeed. That's not good. Um, at least as far as I can tell from, you know, looking at reviews in the website and stuff. But these are much more reasonably priced. So this is what I ordered here. This guy, oh, actually not that one. Um, this one. So I'm pretty excited to uh, get this and give it a try. <laughs> I'm going in this cloud here. I'm talking about looking at sticks on the internet. I'm just diving like this. You've seen plenty of people with that, Brent. Oh, great. That's good to know. Because, of course, I never heard of them before. So, um, yeah, I'm going to die in this cloud here. Um, <laughs> i got to get out of this cloud. Yeah, yeah, I gotta get out of this cloud because, I don't know, you see the airspeed indicator just coming back and forth? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Dryson, are you familiar with the, um, I mean, you must be, um, at least in, in, in theory about the, um, the danger of, of, uh, of flying into clouds or I guess any IFR situation where you have zero visibility and how you completely lose all sense of orientation. Like you think like, oh, you go in the cloud, well you can tell which way is down because you feel the force of gravity, right? Well, when you don't have a point of reference like the horizon, you know, if you are um, in a bank, then the force of gravity could be that you feel that, that acceleration could be sideways instead of straight down. So you might think that you're upright, but you're not, you're in a 90 degree bank. And if you're in a 90 degree bank and you're accelerating in a turn, you're gonna feel more than one G. And so then, then, it's, then the question is, are you in a bank and you're accelerating or are you in uh, or are you like in a pitch up maneuver, like going going upside down in a loop, right? Because as far as gravity is concerned, the, uh, the uh, uh, rotational acceleration, it's the exact same thing whether you're going pulling up vertically in a loop or in a 90 degree bank like this. So you can't tell, and uh, I get a little bit of that sensation in the sim actually when I go into this cloud here. Um, a little bit of that sensation starts to come up. So I heard about um, a story about um, a um, an instructor in a class or something, or they were, they were doing this type of training. This I don't know what you would call it, like disorientation training or something. And um, so what, what what the instructor does is he takes a guy, blindfolds him blindfolds him, puts him in an office chair like this that swivels, right? And then in the middle of the room, then you tell the guy who's blindfolded, you tell him, okay, you need to call out the direction that you're moving. Right, left, 
forward, back, you know, left, right, you know, rotating, translating, right? So with the blindfold on, someone pushes you around in a chair and you call out the direction, right? And so, okay, so they start and the guy's got the blindfold on. He's like, okay, I'm going right. Now I'm going left, forward, back. He's counting out all these directions. And after like a minute or so, the instructor says, okay, take the mask off. So he takes the mask off. And the whole time, he's literally just been in like a slow right turn. <laughs> like your brain cannot make sense of um, forces and acceleration that are acting on your body unless it has a visual reference. Totally gets lost and confused. And I've been able to get up to 24,800 feet. The human mind is very weird. And understanding some basic functions about how it works the way it does and why it works the way it does is very revealing about the human condition. Very, re very revealing about our perceptions about reality and the way things, uh, the way things are. Oftentimes, um, things are not as they seem. I'm just going to dive through this little bit of cloud here. I'm 12 miles out, and now only a couple thousand feet below the mountain I need to fly over. So hopefully as I get over there, I can get a little bit higher. We'll take a look and get out of, get out of this cloud and see if we can find a taller one. That's a nice looking one over there. What even is reality? Well, if you've ever studied, um, um, if you've ever studied um, general relativity at all, um, or at least watched a few YouTube's on general relativity, uh, YouTube videos on general relativity, um, <laughs> then uh, then yeah, then what even is reality? That becomes even more relevant. So this tracker is it's really jittery right now, but I think it, it's the it's the filter that I have it set to. And I think it's it smooths out um, in a few minutes, in a minute or so, because I had it disabled. <laughs> yeah, too advanced. Uh, I mean, it's definitely too advanced for me, um, but I've, uh, yeah, watched a lot of videos and, um, you know, read some things. And it's the kind of thing that relativity, if, if, I, if I make a conscious effort to, like, really try to make my brain understand it and read things and, you know, study things, then I can, I, I, I've been kind of, like, like, close, like, to there, where, like, I, I kind of get it. I mean, I don't know the math at all, and that's kind of the big thing that's missing uh, in my understanding is the math. Um, but um, yeah, it's pretty pretty wild concepts to try to grasp. But you can grasp them. And I'm thinking that's our mountain right there. I need more altitude to get up to it. But I, yeah, I got a cloud over here. Let's see what I can do. Four thousand seven hundred feet.
might get a little ridge lift on this uh, this ridge here. Let's try to go over here and then head up to that cloud. Our way up here. Need to get a lot higher though. It's hard to tell your uh, judge your altitude over this ridge when it's so bright. Still need to climb to get up. Yeah, that's definitely the mountain to get up over right there. That's a tall one. 20, uh, 24,600 feet. Boy, it does just drops off here. I'm a little out of the a little out of the way to get to this cloud, but hopefully it will work out. Speed up a little bit. Head tracking is still a little, a little jittery. There's a lot of tweaking. There's a ton of settings to configure. Let's try turning that up a little bit. All right, coming up to this cloud here, 24,100 feet. We will need to climb. that graphical glitching I was having that last uh, yesterday just gonna come around the upwind side of this cloud here Some good sounds. lift there.
24,000 feet. And need to climb. I'm getting the thermal here. It's just, uh... Gotta find the, uh... Find that spot. There's the mountain we gotta get to. seems to be much more under the cloud today, which is where it should be, but we've been finding it in the past, been kind of on the front edge of the clouds. Where's that lift at that we need? area of light lift but no uh no obvious center to the, to the thermal there a little better. Poundy. Back to work today. Yes, sir. What's up, brother? Thanks for uh, stopping by. Are you uh, just getting ready to go to work, or are you uh, able to... Um, are you able to uh, lurk on the streams while you're at work like I do? Oh, no. Bedtime for Dryson over in Sweden. All right, brother. Thanks. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for stopping by. Looking forward to uh, seeing you again. Hope you have a great week. Don't work too hard. Take it easy with those 12 hour days. Ah, you can lurk, got it. Hey, 
yeah, at the very least at work, I can always just put on, uh, I can just put on a stream and, you know, in another tab and just mute it. So it's, uh, a lurk in the truest sense. But depending on what I'm doing, I can have, uh, I can have the, uh, I can, you know, listen in or participate too. How's the flying been? You know, it's, um, well, I mean, I've been able to climb to 25,000 feet here, but, um, not any higher. And, uh, obviously, uh, you know, you need to get over 28,000 to get up over these peaks. And, uh, So the thermals up here have been uh, have been uh, kind of frustrating and tricky with this weather, and you know normally we're able to climb right up above the clouds, uh, but that doesn't seem to be the case today with the weather that I that I set here. So, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get high enough to do this. I mean, we've got these tall monster clouds. So, I'm thinking I might tweak the weather here. Well, mid-flight. And see if I can get the... Uh, Yeah, that'd have to go into the cloud, but that's uh, difficult. <laughs> yeah, no, there's been no update that I know of, Poundy. Um, there have been days where, um, it, it, or weather, you know, days, but you know, weather presets that I've set up that, um, yeah, the lift kind of just seems to go right up to cloud base like you'd expect, but then most of the time we can climb right up past the cloud base, so. All, you know, all the way over the top of the clouds, so. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm not really sure, you know, like, what settings, you know, do that. Let's check, um, let's turn on the, uh, the 3D thermal, uh, visualizer here and just kind of see what it looks like. So yeah, these lines are all kind of going like just up kind of into the cloud. But I've turned on the uh, 3D thermal visualizer on days and the lines just go right up past the top of the cloud. So... So why not? Let's go into the cloud here. Twenty-five thousand, but then I get too slow because I can't see what I'm doing in here. We'll see here what we can do. Now I'm climbing, but I'm climbing deep within this uh, big, uh, big dark cloud. So uh, but I'm actually not climbing. I'm actually descending. Wow. 
Welcome to Pony's Poetry Slam. I pack my bags and make my way to the station. I paid my dues, and now I'm finally going to make my fucking way, baby. I unpack my bags when I finally get to my abode. I also just might not be able to climb above 25,000 feet. Well, no, I know people have climbed higher. I was going to say because of the aircraft performance, and I keep stalling. But uh, see here, I'm, I'm descending. And the air is going up, but I'm descending. There we go. Now I'm going up. I'm also flying without ballast, and maybe that was a mistake. Let's see, can I just do that? Can I do that well in the air? Oh, what the heck? Wow, I was sure I emptied the ballast before taking off, but I guess I have... Maybe I should drop the ballast. Ah, showing full ballast. Let's try let me try dumping the ballast. I am climbing here, but it looks like I just have to go into the cloud to climb today. Which I didn't really want to do, but you know, whatever. The uh, virtual air police are taking the day off. It's 26,500. I also got the head tracker, uh, uh, head tracking set up, uh, Poundy, so a little bit different, uh, view for me and for anyone who's, uh, viewing the stream. <laughs> You're in the mountains, what's the worst that can happen? Well, I did, you know, I, I, I did, you know, look at this cloud before going into it, and it's definitely clear of the mountains, so I'm not going to collide with the side of the mountain unless I come tumbling out of the cloud, or, you know, unless I go falling out of it. Main problem with going in the cloud is you lose that, you lose your uh, orientation and I end up diving and climbing like this. So now I'm like diving like crazy. Which is not a good way to climb. 27,000 feet though, so I'm, I am, I'm getting up here. Let's see if I can just get uh, kind of up above the top of this cloud. Air crash investigations. <laughs> well, fortunately, it's streamed, so there won't be much of an investigation. They can just watch the stream back. Yeah, not efficient when you can't. I mean, I, can, I can't keep the same airspeed. The airspeed indicator is going up and down, right? Because I'm diving, climbing, diving, climbing in, in the turn. You can't maintain a bank and pitch angle when you can't see the horizon. Now I'm stalling, right? I gotta get through those down. I got way slow there. And the stall, the stall speed increases quite a bit up here at 27,000 feet.
trim, yeah. Oh, you know, I can uh, set the autopilot to hold bank. Let's try that. That seems to be working. Climbing slowly, but I'm climbing. 27,900. There's 28,000 feet. I feel the conflict. I tell you one thing. Hold your hatred. Put it in a split. Put it in, put it in the air. Blow, 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 blow. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Kind of playing with the uh, filter settings here on the... Uh, on the head tracking too to kind of just still trying to figure out the best the best settings twenty eight thousand three hundred feet should be high enough to get to this first turn point finally actually dump? No, it did not. What is... Oh, it does say zero. Oh, that, that does not correspond. Hmm. Thermals are just, uh, it's just a little, uh, tricky today. Conflicted control setting, yeah. I don't know. I think it's just, you know, kind of buggy. Well, this computer is actually, the flight computer is an add-on. It's a separate mod, third-party mod, right? So, maybe it doesn't really communicate with the, with the, uh, yeah, this, this ballast setting and that. Yeah, it might just be, uh says zero now and then there's and then there's this ballast setting which seems to indicate that there's uh, a lot of ballast in it so which one is which I don't know twenty eight thousand six hundred feet Let's go ahead and move on from this cloud. Yeah, many ways to read and change the weights. Yeah, and I'm not sure if like one of them takes priority or, right? Like there's a bunch of different ways that can kind of go. 28,700 feet. I'm gonna go ahead and fly on to this first turn point. Go check out this first mountain. Bet the sim weight and balance page is true. Yeah. 
Yeah, this, this setting. Yeah, really don't know. We'll go ahead and fly through this cloud. And speed up a little bit and see, uh, we'll go hit this first turn point here, this first mountain. And while we're, uh, kind of coming through here. Yeah, 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 there's, um, yeah, we've got, uh, the Discord server is, um, what are we up to now? Uh, yeah, 33 people on there. Yeah, a few of the got gravel regulars coming by, and, um... You know, I've, most of the time that I'm streaming and I'm flying, um, uh, doesn't really conflict with those events. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna be above this mountain. Gonna be below it, so I'm gonna have to, uh... It looks, uh... Sort of oddly out of focus. That's kind of this train looks kind of weird. Gonna have to fly out in front of it here. <laughs> Wind from my left. Woof. Yeah, let's not hit this mountain. But it is a big one, and boy, does it ever drop off. Not a very lot of uh, detail on the on it there, but uh, wow. <laughs> Are those trees? Okay, well that's obviously not uh, obviously not that accurate. Whoops a daisy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there are not gonna be trees growing up there. Alright, heading on to the next uh the next waypoint here, fifty-six miles. And let's go ahead and bring up the uh bring up the task, little nav map, show you guys where we are. We got a long ways to go here still. Hopefully we can start flying a little bit faster. Took off here, hit this first uh, waypoint. We're trying to hit all eight of the um, all eight of the eight thousand meter plus peaks up here, including Mount Everest. So we got a little ways to go to get to Everest. And uh, conditions are tricky, so who knows if we'll get all get to all eight. But yeah, Poundy, I, you know, like, got gravel in the Sim Soaring Club, and, you know, they do events, uh, group flights that are, that are at different times, and, and, and there are times that I can't really make, uh, so it kind of just works out, it's like, okay, well, maybe there's guys that can make, you know, make it at the times that I'm, that I'm around and can fly, so, um, that's kind of my, my thinking there, so we can sort of have, you know, group flights available for, for everybody. <laughs> Is a whole lot of tall mountains here. Look at this thing. Twenty seven thousand feet. Like a bunch of people uh, headed towards Mount Everest there in uh, various jets. Fighter jet would probably be a more ideal uh, uh, vehicle for getting up there. Probably no problem with the performance on an F-22. Oh, 
Oh, got it. Yeah, cool. Speed up a little bit here and get on the uh, upwind side of this cloud. We have some lift, we'll take it. We will need to climb more. These are some big mountains. Big mountains. Whoa! That was nauseating. <laughs> oh, the uh, yeah, open source uh, head tracking software being a little funky. Six thousand feet. Freaks out every now and then. Can bring up the head tracking. Oh, it seems to be. <laughs> Why does it think my that my chair is? Uh... Oh, you know what? Hold on, I can. Um... Let me calibrate it. Configuration. Calibrate face. Look directly at the camera and click calibrate and wait a few seconds. Okay. Face scale saved. Nice pink lipstick. Okay, you like that? Uh... <laughs> okay, turn the head tracking back on. It was like picking up the back of my chair. So maybe after calibrating it'll, uh, maybe after calibrating it'll, it'll work a little better, a little more reliably. We'll see, we'll see. All right, let's see. Where are we at here? 40, uh, 42.8 miles. Oh, yes. So these big tall peaks are, uh, I mean, they're definitely, um, they definitely stand out here.
clearly that's uh, that's where we have to go next. Head toward this uh, complex of cloud here. I think if this doesn't work out, then maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll tweak the weather. This face tracking doesn't really seem to do the um, the Z axis very well. I mean it. I can uh, maybe tweak that. Let's see. Oh, no wonder. Hmm. Change the graph to uh, make that accelerate a lot more. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I what I wanted. Let's try that. Uh oh, what happened? Did I just turn? Oh, now I lost it. Did it crash? There it goes. Get one more in yeah, that's what I want. Get my face in there close. Oh god, that's really awful. <laughs> Be able to kind of like get up and look out, look up over the dash, you know, like that. Lots of settings to, uh, uh, lots of ways to tweak this. Interesting. Uh, which software, which camera? So the camera is the like absolute cheapest possible uh, Logitech uh, cheapo webcam you can find on Amazon. It's like C270 or something like that. It's like a 20 or $30 camera. And um, I actually just ordered a, a better camera. So um, I'm, I'm thinking, hoping, better camera, maybe it'll smooth out, maybe it'll run a little nicer, we'll see. Um, the software, then there's actually two pieces of software, which is pretty annoying. But, um, yeah, so the, this is uh, AI track. So this is what's actually, this is what's actually, you know, using the webcam and is tracking the face. And maybe it kind of struggles because I don't have my full face in the 
screen. I did that. Yeah, so maybe if it was back further, had a little bit wider angle, it would work better. Um, but then this this sends the tracking data to this application, Open Track, which you can see the little octopus is reflecting the tracking data. There's a ton of configuration and features, and uh, you know, finding what works best for your system is, uh, yeah, is tricky. But it's basically only cost, you know, the cost of a web camera versus, you know, the Toby Eye Tracker is like almost 300 bucks or something like that. So. There's some lift there, down to 25,000 feet. Coming up into this cloud now, let's see if we can find a climb. For the price you can handle it being not perfect. Yeah, I mean... Um... And I know I, I had a Toby eye tracker for for a, a little. I tried it, um, but I didn't I didn't spend that much time with it. I, and I, I found it to really not work for me. But then I realized that I wasn't using it the way people were using it. So um, that's a much more sophisticated device. So I'm gonna try a better webcam and see. This is uh, this is a a moderately okay experience. It's I really just kind of want you know a smooth situation. A lot better than trying to manually view changes. Yeah. So I do have a button. One button to disable it. Now it's disabled. Button on the here. Um, and I have a I have an analog stick on the thumb on this yoke for looking around Which works I mean fine But the uh, the head tracking is um, You know pretty neat Yeah, this is getting, this is, this is weird in here. I'm gonna change the weather. I got no one in here flying with me, so. I'm gonna change it to the um, Andy's weather. Uh, only, this weather worked really well. I'm gonna just lower the uh, lower the wind velocity here. And I'm gonna raise the cloud base up. All right. God mode, we cheated. Change the weather. Let's see if that makes a difference. And I'll go over to this cloud here and see if that'll get me up because we have the uh, tall peaks coming up here. We need to climb 24,400 feet. My mustache is too long. You trim that. <laughs> I 
<laughs> yeah, weather isn't static over there. Yeah, like, look, all of a sudden the weather changed, right? Who would have who thought? I'm gonna hit the uh, I hit the whole course while I go for a fluid exchange break. I'll be I'll be right back. Somebody in the uh, in the F-22 and someone in the F-18. Yeah, it looks like they're headed out for uh, for Everest there. Three thousand feet. Got a little ways to go yet. We got kind of a series of four tall peaks here, including Mount Everest. So let's get up over to Mount Everest. page here and then oh somebody uh a little bit of a slew action there goodbye <laughs> that guy just took off the canadian 22 milkland 23 finney bc morrison crew guys going for it with the fighter jets up over uh everest it looks like I'm at 22,600. Let's see if I can connect with a good climb here. Under this cloud. Oh, 
Oh, someone in the SU-27. Yeah, looks like we got the fighter jet crew up here. I really want to go get up there now and uh, show them what's up. All these guys in the fighter jets, and then this guy shows up in a glider. I want to be that guy. But I'll need altitude to do it. The terrain's getting mighty tall. We got clouds here. We should we should find a little. We got some dark cloud here. This guy should produce me some lift. Twenty-two thousand three hundred. Hmm. No. Let's see if this will do it. Sounding pretty good. That's a good big area. Get the flaps down. came out of it, but that's okay. We should be able to get back in. Two thousand six hundred. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I'm kind of kind of wishy washy in the in the DG eight hundred eight. Um, I, I'm thinking that that I have been always done well. Uh, seem to have done better on the uh, on the discus. Um, Yeah, um, and, uh, well, we've been flying a different, bit different weather on, on the DG, uh, and the 808 here, so, um, yeah, I'm kind of, kind of back and forth on which one, you know, I like, you know, the, the, the discus just is, I think it's just easier to fly, um, you know, I can't say anything about the realism of the flight models, you know, but, um, um, 
yeah, especially like thermaling, I think the uh, the DG is just so, so, so more slippery. It kind of wants to, I, I kind of come in and out and I dive and I climb and it's harder to hold the, uh, the airspeed constant. Versus with the discus, I think I, I, this is a lot easier to fly. But I haven't flown the AS-33 uh, really at all. So I can't uh, comment on that. Proving to be a, uh, uh, a pretty challenging task here. The lift is uh, is there and it's not there. Let's try changing turn directions. Ah, interesting. Interesting, uh, interesting take there, Poundy. All right, can I get up in this thermal or not here? 23,000 feet. It's proving to be somewhat challenging. Trying to get up to those tall mountains up there. In and out of the lift, in and out of the lift. better cloud than this one. Many other good options around here for good clouds. Banging my head against the uh, lift here. All right, I'm losing patience with this.
I'm gonna go away from that cloud and then I start to find some lift here. Let's see if I can kind of work that. Can't work that. Just gonna go in closer here to uh, into these mountains and uh, see what I can get. Yeah, cloud's not working for me. This is a um, maybe a uh, uh, somewhat of a foolhardy idea to think that we can uh, get up here, but I don't know. We'll see. We do have some epic mountains. Go around on the upwind side of this mountain here and see what I can get. These clouds don't look very good here. And the cloud over there looks kind of okay. Yeah, this is uh, this is a lot trickier flying up here than uh, than what I thought than what I thought it would be. Don't be able to climb up high and just get right over these mountains, but. Uh, yeah, I took that for granted. The Canadian 22 uh, coming over here, flying fast in a fighter jet. guys in the F-22s. They're doing a bit better than me today. Let's try to not collide with the mountain there. Some nasty sink. It's crazy. I'm 
Might get some ridge lift here. Look at this wall. Holy smokes. Mount Makalu. So that's on my turn point. I might be able to tag just barely the edge over here. I should have made those uh, turn points a little bit larger diameter. But the idea was to get up and fly over the top of them. <laughs> Still well below. Getting ridge lift here. Let's try to work the ridge lift coming up here. Twenty three thousand feet. Long ways up there. Oh god, I got slow there. Can't stay in the ridge lift there either. This is one of those days. All right, I'm just gonna head. Let's see here. Is the cloud there? Not a very good looking cloud for producing lift. up the music vibes a little bit all right well let's see uh i'm struggling to get up there oh, what a cool view right here though look at this what an epic mountain holy smokes all right so i think the plan i'm gonna go fly out in front of uh well i mean i don't have really have any choice but to just get out in front here now Guys in the fighter jets are having a good time flying around here. I just kind of got just gotta hope I can make it up out in front of here. It's not able to get to that turn point. Change of music, change of luck. Well, well, we'll see here. detail in the train up here is a bit lacking. Those are some tall faces though.
Quite a bit higher than me, those mountains are. And, um, I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna try to uh, maybe let's bail on this and go try to land down here at uh, Lukla. That's that uphill runway, that famous one, right? PNLK. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, <laughs> I didn't. I don't know the name of it, but you know the one I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go try and land down there. This is um, this is kind of not working. We'll cut to come back on the day with some better weather, different weather, or try some other things. So we'll just shoot down this canyon here. Pretty gnarly on the scenery. Head tracking just kind of spazzes out. I'll say hey, what's up to this guy? Why it doesn't show that model? I definitely have the F-18 installed. Hey, what's up, Bumble? Well, you joined in at the right time for me to bail on this. <laughs> it's uh, it's that's not working out so well. Uh, I even changed the weather mid-flight and still just not having it. So I'm gonna go down here and try to land at Lukla. This is that tricky landing. And we'll try to take off from there. You're in bed and will continue sleeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Better area to crank the wind up and use the ridge lift. Yeah, you might be right about that, uh, Poundy. You know, we've get we've been able to get. Um, and I know with this weather preset, you know, we've been able to get those magic thermals that just ride up the front of the cloud and go way above the cloud base. And uh, so I guess I was counting on that uh, today and maybe it still could if I get in the right cloud um, but that's just not working for me today I'm kind of thinking I should maybe check out this airport
How much wind is there at high altitude? Um, less wind. 18,000 feet, I got 15 knots. Oh, so the altitude I'm at right now... That's only showing me 9 knots, which is strange. Because it should be... Should be 15. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh... Yeah, it's just kind of not working today. Yeah, that looks like a challenging landing down there. We're gonna go to this famous one here around the corner. Let's see if we can land there. And if we can, see if we can take off from there. I mean, I know I can land there. It's just a matter of whether I can land there safely. <laughs> Yes, um, I mean, oh, I mean, incredible mountains up here, and it's, I mean, it's impressive how much larger they are than any anywhere else, you know. Landing and going up without the engine, yeah. Yeah, I kind of want to try like a no engine takeoff, and I want to try an engine takeoff. Looks like somebody else here is uh, attempting to take off. P.S. Uh, PTS2. I don't know what airplane that is. Yeah, that would be the ultimate. Roll up the slope, turn around, and roll right back down, so it's basically a touch and go without stopping. Um, I'm sure that's possible, whether or not I'm capable of doing that. A better question. Of course. Spoilers are unbelievably effective on this glider. Bunch of flaps to start. All right, 
let's bring it around here. Got really slow. I'm liking this setup. Pretty slow. Oh, now I'm high. Ooh, not pretty, but we got it. What's up, uh, Marmatek? Uh, where are we? We're at that world famous airport. Uh, what's this place called? I'm gonna roll back down the hill. No, I'm not. Look at that. Yeah, it landed. That yeah, worked. Uh, what's this airport called again? Um, Lukla or whatever? The attempt at Mount Everest didn't really work. <laughs> at least not today. Let's uh, let's turn the engine on and taxi up to the top. Oh, we can't turn the engine. I don't have fuel. The fuel over here. Yeah, Lukla. Whoops, not weather. Give me some fuel. And let's see. Start the engine now. Uh, yeah, so Marmatech, uh, Marmatech 9, Lukla, uh, V-I-L-K, what is that in the, uh, oh, and somebody just took off, hello, uh, Victor India Lima Kilo. Victor India Lima Kilo is where we are at. Where's my engine at? Can I turn it on? No, I don't want to start. There it goes. I think you gotta push it like in the right spot. <laughs> you can land on Everest if you have the balls. Oh, Marmite, but it was taken. Right. Um, uh, yeah, well, I wasn't able to climb up to get up to Mount Everest today. So that was that was the plan. And, um, yeah, so, uh, I mean, I'm doing great. Thanks for, for asking. But uh, uh, the flight's not going so great. So. So we bailed on the Mount Everest and we just came down to see if we could land in this airport and now we're going to uh, warm the engine up and go up and turn around and uh, we're going to take, we're going to, we're going to do a power takeoff and then, um, then land again and then see if we can do the unpowered takeoff. So I'm pretty sure we can, especially because we'll have a bit of a, we'll have a bit of a headwind. Um, yeah, there we go. All right. Oh, we're gonna need full throttle to taxi here, it looks like. Is that even gonna do it? Uh, nope. This engine does not have a lot of power, dudes. <laughs> we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to cheat. We're gonna have to, uh... That'll be fine. About the slew. Looks good. Alright. Full throttle. Spoilers off. This would be an easy takeoff. If 
I could see on the runway. Boy, I still ended up using like the whole freaking runway though. Look at that. We're at 9,000 feet. What a crazy place. People live up there. Yeah, what a view. Checking that guy going in to go try and land. Alright, I'm gonna put the gear down and let's see if we can go land again here. Engine off. You're down. Full spoilers. Dive for right at the end of the runway. Pull up. Oh god. Oh, this is rough. Woohoo! Oh, just <laughs> say hi to that guy. Oh god. And bam. Well, I need a new nose. Yeah. Oh well. Oh, I'm in your driveway. Yeah, yeah. Well. Oops, I don't want to do that. Let's do that. Um. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. This one didn't really work today too well, guys. So uh, I'm gonna bail on this. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> I crashed into your golf hanger. Yeah. Yeah, what a bummer. Yeah, I got some stuff going on actually today, and um, so I can this I, you know, I hate to bail on it, um, but um, hate to bail on you guys, but uh, I think I should just go take care of some stuff today, anyways. Uh, we'll be back uh, with a better one, and uh, you know, some days they go great, and some sometimes they don't. Thanks, Poundy, for hanging out. Thanks, Bumble, for showing up, and Marmatech. Thanks, you guys. Um, yeah, I'm gonna end this here, and uh, I'll catch you on another.